Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming. My name is Mariano Cugnetti. I'm the CTO at Enter. Enter is uh, an ISP, an Italian ISP. Uh, we are a company based in Milano. And today we will talk about uh, the superpowers of, of uh, cloud based on OpenStack. First of all, let me introduce the large set of technologies that are required in order to build a successful public IAS. Uh, we are running a public cloud on OpenStack since uh, 2013, uh, but before we have experienced uh, a lot with OpenStack since the Cactus release providing VPS services. These are just a small list of the technology involved in our uh, environment, uh, which require so many skills that sometimes the younger they are, the engineers, uh, the best is the, the result, the, the better the result you get from them. We are a team, uh, a very small and agile team. We started with six engineers, now we are 10. And the average age when we deployed this environment was uh, 22 years, except for me, obviously. Um, since we are an ISP, we come from uh, a strong network uh, uh, experience and skill. Uh, we deployed our cloud because we already uh, had a large network uh, uh, spreading across Europe. Uh, we provide our customers, which are mostly Italian companies, the, which have their headquarters in Italy. We provide with VPN, MPLS VPNs across uh, all around the world and especially across Europe. In order to be in con total control of the networking uh, supply chain, we decided to move the closest possible to the customers by activating our point of presence uh, in the main internet exchange in Europe. That's why we asked to, to local access uh, provider like uh, British Telecom or Telefonica or other smaller and more agile providers to deliver L2 traffic in these POPs. That's why we set up our POPs in uh, Milan, obviously, where uh, our data center is, and in Frankfurt, close to the D6, which is the main German uh, internet exchange, in Amsterdam, close to the M6, which is the main internet exchange of all the whole Europe, in uh, UK, close to the Lynx, and in France, close to the France 6. We had these five POPs, and then we ended up asking one of our colocation customers in Italy, which is Bergacom, to provide a 10 gigabit Ethernet ring, a metro Ethernet carrier, uh, link across all of the five pops. So we are running our cloud with silos which are deployed in two pops that are connected at a layer two, a 10 gigabit Ethernet ring. This is not an OPEX, this is a CAPEX. We actually bought the link, so we, are, we, we really own uh, the network. Uh, and um, uh, having a dedicated network uh, means having very low latency between all the, the nodes and the regions uh, and having very large bandwidth to play with everything you will see after. So this is the map of our network. You can see the pops in Europe and you can see also the connection we have in Italy and in Europe. Super services means, uh, uh, as um, Randy Bias said once, uh, uh, OpenStack is not a cloud platform. OpenStack is uh, the core, is the, the kernel of any cloud service you, can, you may want to build. Uh, that's why we decided to de de design our offering based on OpenStack and other services. Obviously, there are the main services running in OpenStack. Computing, we run KVM. It's a very powerful and efficient hypervisor. It has a very low uh, footprint uh, compared to VMware and to Zen server and uh, it's, so it can use the hardware in a more efficient way. We do not do over provision uh, because uh, the hypervisor can uh, by KSM or ballooning can optimize the usage of uh, RAM and uh, virtualization. Uh, in computing we also consider to have GLANs uh, which we use to provide templates and to provide snapshots all across uh, the regions. How does it work? Every time a user uh, takes a snapshot of an instance, it is 
the, the image file is copied to the object storage, which is a large cluster spanning all Europe. And so all the copies of the file, the image file, are copied to the other sites in Europe. So if you just change the region you are working on, you will be presented with the same snapshots you have just taken in another region. So it's very easy and very uh, immediate how to, you can snapshot a whole infrastructure and restore it in another region for redundancy and distribution. Storage. Um, it took me um, at least two or three months to decide whether to go Ceph or to go Swift. Both had very good um, advantages. And uh, we decided we wanted to keep both. Uh, we use Swift because we have a partnership with SwiftStack. And uh, at the time when we went online, Ceph was not providing geographical distribution and was not going to deliver storage policy, which storage policies, uh, which uh, Swift does, and uh, allows us to uh, let the user decide where whether the, the, da the data inside the container must be replicated across all the cluster, so all across Europe, or must be contained in one single region for uh, regulation or for security reasons. So our customers can decide when they deploy a container whether they want to uh, spread their data across the Europe and the cluster or not. On the block storage side, we use Ceph, which allows us, by tweaking uh, the caches on top of the, 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 net, the, the storage nodes to reach uh, at least uh, 12,000 IOPS per single node, which is a quite amazing result compared to enterprise uh, storage systems. Uh, we use uh, only commodity hardware, so these uh, performances are achieved uh, on top of super micro, super servers, which are quite common in the OpenStack environment. Obviously, we also run ephemeral storage inside the nodes. And we decided to have all the storages uh, split across different platforms. So in, in case of fault of any component, you can have redundancy of the data. Networking. Uh, since uh, our experience with um, uh, Cactus, Diablo, and Essex uh, uh, showed us the limit of the VLAN uh, plugin to, to design overlay networks, so we decided we would have gone in production with the VXLAN, which at the time uh, of, the, of the launch of Enter Cloud Suite, which is our product, was in uh, alpha. So it was very, 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 very experimental. We decided to do this, and by the help, with the help of Mellanox Technologies that provide the hardware, both of, from the network gear from the switches to the NICs, we uh, reached uh, a very efficient level of, uh, of loading. So the CPU is not uh, loaded with the compression UDP acceleration that's required in VLAN, in the XLAN. Uh, we'll, we run a pure OpenStack, pure Neutron, uh, L3, and Open vSwitch uh, uh, solution. We don't run any proprietary uh, plugin. We didn't want to. All of our, uh, of, all of our installation, uh, ranging from Nova to Swift to any component is made up by open source components. DNS. DNS is the cheapest, most affordable, and available system to provide the geographical load balancing across regions. Since we have regions in different places in Europe, and since our users are replicated through a Galera cluster across all the region, every user can just switch to one region to each other with no re-authentication needed. Uh, this is possible also because we use Couchbase to replicate tokens across the, uh, the regions. Moreover, having a cluster, distributed cluster, we can let the regions communicate each other. The DNS is fundamental because if you want to have uh, infrastructures which are distributed across uh, regions, you need to provide some flexible tool to balance across uh, your installation. So we decided to get the best from Route 53, I mean the API support, uh, the um, configurability, and the load balancing, HA, and geo functionalities. But we decided to get the most 
out also of GeneDNS, which was the only one providing a DNS based on a, an Anycast network. So since we own the network and since we come from the network, we are skilled on this, we decided to build a, an Anycast network. So our DNS, our, our authority of DNS, are exposed on APIs on an IP which is like 8888 by Google. So every user just called the same IP to request to uh, forward his query to our DNS uh, and is uh, automatically routed, routed to by BGP to the closest DNS. This allows the users also to use GOIP, uh, GOIP DNS that let the user interact with the closest instances so you can have multiple resolutions based on the location of the user on the network. You can also configure load balancing, weighted load balancing. You can have 70% of your traffic going to region in Milan and 30% going to the region in Frankfurt. Uh, if Milan fails, automatically the system detects it and routes 100% of the traffic to Frankfurt. The DNS is running on an engine that we developed in-house, and it's based on a Scala technology. And we are particularly proud of it because every DNS query takes at, at maximum three milliseconds to be answered. So it's a pretty good, pretty fast uh, as a DNS service. And the last thing <coughs> you need in order to distribute your contents, uh, object storage is, is fine for a lot of purposes, but when it comes to distribute uh, static contents, uh, software updates, etc., you definitely need to have some caching uh, local and close to the user, and you need to have low latencies in accessing the static data. Obviously, we could not build a worldwide network to provide CDN, so we partner with the uh, Hibernia Networks, with, which uh, is a, a US company that acquired Atreto a very known company from Holland, and they provide us with 200 pops all around Europe uh, with their proprietary Anycast network, and they provide CDN services based on a proprietary solution for CDN. Interfaces are very important. We think that uh, most of the users here are very familiar with uh, with um, Horizon, but in some cases you find users that are newbies or quite new to the cloud, so they may get stuck on building the network, uh, building the router, configuring the, the allocation pools, and so they require for something very fast where uh, difficult decisions are taken by someone else. So that's why we decided to develop something close to the uh, typical service, uh, VPS service uh, uh, for uh, developers so that they can be very fast in, develop, in deploying uh, instances and infrastructures on the cloud. This does not mean it's uh, uh, simplified. It's easy to use it, but you find out all the functionalities you have in Horizon. Uh, moreover, we developed our own HTML5 uh, interface uh, for Horizon and uh, for uh, object storage for Swift. Anybody who has used the interface on Horizon for uh, containers knows uh, how difficult it is to cope with it. So we decided to rewrite it from scratch. Um, another interface we are running uh, is Scalar. We have a partnership active with Scalar. We are listed as cloud providers in uh, scalar.com. And we also provide the local installation of Scalar to our users so uh, they can uh, access to uh, self-healing, auto-scaling functionalities inside our cloud. Super management means that we can play with uh, developers. We, we need very simple uh, test environment, test and dev environments. They don't want to cope with infrastructure. They don't want to plug too many things in their infrastructure. They just want servers and start uh, and boot up immediately. But we also work with companies. And that's why we are exploring the world of enterprise, because the managed cloud is something that the big ones, like Amazon and Google, are not covering. So the, a niche, it's a niche between giants, but uh, it's a 
interesting niche for uh, uh, companies like us to investigate into. Hardware is the, one of the most interesting uh, challenges we are facing. Uh, we, as I told you, we, worked, uh, we started working in 2011 with Dell and HP, but the more we went over uh, working on OpenStack, we understood that we could carve our own platform. Dell and HP and the vendors in general provide multi-purpose service, but when you need specific uh, uh, performances, uh, for example, for Ceph or for, for example, for Swift, it comes out that the multipurpose is not fitting anymore. So you start investigating how to build your own configuration. And that's why we ended up working with Supermicro. The next step is not only assembling the hardware, but building ourselves. In Milan, we run a makerspace and a co working space. So our idea, our hacking attitude is quite uh, uh, developed. So we like to do it ourselves. And that's why last week I was at the Open Compute Summit. I had a keynote there. And we are collaborating with the Open Compute Project. And we, are, we have de delivered, deployed three regions out of five. And uh, London and Paris were, were planned by the end of 2014. We delayed by three months because we want to deploy those regions with open compute hardware. And so that's why we have to think about the platform. Obviously, uh, more challenges are coming. And we think that the way the cloud is standardizing uh, on top uh, of it, of, of the user experience, uh, is something we need to support. And that's why we are uh, working a lot on Docker, because we think that the moving do workloads on our cloud will be made mainly with Docker, both uh, on public clouds and private clouds. Uh, so that's why we, we are working closer with Docker to support it in our cloud. That's it. Thank you very much. If you want to visit us, we are at booth 34. If you have any question, feel free to ask. OK. OK, the question is, uh, did we find any issue in, talking with, in um, working with the token replication? The answer is yes. Uh, yes, because uh, if you don't replicate them correctly, uh, you end up re-authenticating every time. You fail to authenticate both on Horizon and on the APIs. Moreover, there was a bug into Catchbase that uh, was very difficult to find out. So uh, updating to the latest release, we solved uh, the problem. So, but Couchbase definitely was the solution to our problem, the latest release. Any other question? OK. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. <laughs>